Hey there, Pete here. Uh, this is going to be, I guess, video two, vlog two. I'm not going to be vlogging daily. It just, just happens to be the next day after my video talking about just starting off with this kind of experiment. Um, and I thought that it'd probably be useful for a bit of context following the previous video to say what I meant by indie hacking and uh, what did I mean by pragmatically pursuing an opportunity and taking that slowly, um, thinking about that as a step-by-step -step process rather than trying to do the alternative, which is kind of scale really quickly, get an idea out there, raise lots of money and take that route. I think that this path that I'm about to describe is a little bit um, less visible to the wider public, um, although there are loads of people that follow similar processes and build kind of micro businesses if you like so micro SaaS or single feature software as a service businesses um, stuff like that and also this would apply and be very applicable towards information products and digital products um, just generally maybe even other types of businesses if you kind of extrapolate and take some of the buzzwords out and swap them out with some other buzzwords hopefully uh, my mic I'm not knocking it too much I'm kind of testing a new mic I've bought some like three or four mics or something so I'm going to be cycling through trying to figure out if any of them are any good. Um, equally, the lighting should be trash. It's a particularly uh, dark grey day here in London. Um, but I'm trying to make it work with just lights dotted around the room. And hopefully a lot of image processing will sort that out. Um, but anyway, so kind of touching on the framework today, I'm not going to go into detail. Um, I'm just going to skim through this framework and each one of these would break out into more detail which I'll have on my bl uh, blog post later on which you'll see linked below if you're on YouTube and if you're already on the blog post obviously you'll just scroll down and you'll see kind of a bit more explanation a bit more detail and then you'll be able to kind of click on those eventually and then that will go to actual kind of like write-ups and on the theory of what I'm talking about there and then as I'm applying it hopefully you'll see the vlog or on YouTube the video on YouTube or you can read on the blog post just to kind of keep up with where I'm at what I was doing for this particular project that I end up picking and things like that um, so there will be more detail but I think without having this very early on in the journey it will be a bit hard for people that don't know me and haven't worked with me in the past to grasp what I'm trying to do and where I'm at in the project um, and of course, as, as it takes time to build up the content and type to build up the project, whichever one I choose, I'd love to kind of explain to people, oh, when I was at this stage, I made this decision for that reason. But now that I'm transitioning to another stage, I need to make a slightly different decision. And that's why having this framework is useful to reference for other people to be like, hey, if you're there at this stage of the business, um, maybe you want to go and see kind of the videos in section two sort of thing. So that's what we're looking at. I've probably over elaborated, um, but let's dive in and look at what this framework um, is kind of recommending and look at why each one of these steps is really, really important to follow. So um, first of all, I should kind of talk a little bit about how this framework came about and what it's for. So essentially, I've been working with early stage businesses for you know pretty much my whole career. So since I was 19, it's a good 10 years, almost more than 10 years now. And working with each of these businesses, be it animation studios or um, software as a service in certain cases, or um, maybe like even the money transfer business and stuff like that, what kind of came to light was you'd kind of start building, you'd start making something, but it wouldn't be obvious necessarily other than you need to get users what you should be focusing on what, at what stage, but also how to communicate to other people what resources might be useful or what type of attention we might need at what stage. So for example, do we need more product managers? Do we need more product developers? Do we need a marketer at this point? Do we need a sales team at this point? And things like that. But what I found is when you're working with these businesses, people will like the idea of those things but, and would potentially spend time trying to get their hands on those resources, but it would actually be a waste of time because certain steps hadn't been fulfilled yet. But also, if it was your first time, you don't understand the context of what organization or type of business or type of product you're building 
in the context of what the wider business needs to look like at certain stages. So that's partly what this is. And it's for, I've kind of written this out as though you're a solo founder um, who wants to A, find an idea, and then B, build that out to the point it's profitable. Um, and obviously there are a lot of assumptions and things in here uh, that go into that. So whether or not you wanna kind of raise money or not and things like that might be worth considering. But this should be a kind of catch all what you're trying to do at a really, really high level of any business. So laying the foundations, um, doing your research, validating your minimal viable product. Um, I'll explain more about minimal viable product. Um, if you're not familiar with startups community, that, that might sound really weird. Um, and then creating a marketing funnel and then looking at switching the focus to retention and product development and then scaling and automating. Now, of course, this isn't gonna be applicable to every type of business. I'm more trying to focus on that solo founder working from a laptop, whether it be a software product or an ebook kind of business or an information business. Um, those are kind of more what I'm looking at here. So, but they, they, these will definitely apply, they're general enough terms to apply to any type of business. And to kind of dive in a bit deeper and focusing on that kind of solo founder perspective, maybe just one or two of you, um, Obviously at the very base, you wanna lay foundations. But what I try to get people to think about before writing a line of code, before picking a market or anything, is just decide what your lifestyle is tr going to be or what you want your lifestyle to be once the business is up and running and in full effect. So do you envisage your day being sitting in an office, calling shots and a team of other people executing those shots? Do you envisage yourself as a digital nomad with a laptop on a beach? Do you envisage yourself having a team of 100,000 people across the world delivering multiple projects simultaneously that are super high value? Obviously, um, those different types of businesses have massive, massive implications on A, what type of project you should build, and B, what your lifestyle is gonna be like. And what you'll hear me refer to a lot about in this project is trying to get the balance of what your lifestyle is like versus um, how much success or what you describe as success is. So for me with this project, I'm obviously trying to transition from going from a contractor where I'm contributing my time to a project, billing for my time, but obviously the kind of projects I take on actually can be not just time consuming in terms of months, years or, or what have you, it's also kind of, you end up working quite late and things like that. And I wanna transition from spending, you know, like 10 hour days to somewhere closer to maybe doing a four hour day or something like that. And so thinking about that, that has obvious implications on the kind of work or kind of business that I'll do next. I don't want to necessarily um, do something that requires me on site working with the client for 10 hours a day. Like that's obviously something that's now off limits. So getting those foundations right is getting a bit of clarity in your mind on what you wanna be doing, um, what you want that kind of ideal average day to look like. I'll expand on that idea later on, but that, that's very crucial for solo founders. Um, and I think I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to think about the project that you take on and what the implications are on your lifestyle. And I'll discuss you know, the highs and lows of um, some of the people I've met over the years that have built businesses and, and just what kind of impacts those businesses have had on their, their lives, positive and negative. Um, so laying foundations isn't just about um, writing a business plan or anything like that. In fact, I'm gonna largely avoid writing a business plan as you'll see, um, but I've got templates and structured information that you will use much like the business model canvas, but it's actually a bit more tangible. It's something that grows and works with you. Um, so I'll discuss that later on. So we're gonna look at laying the foundations and then only once a significant portion of that is done, would I start to look at the, the market that I wanna work with, which I've got a rough idea, um, a kind of a broad way to describe that market I'm gonna look at, but I'll discuss that later. But at this point, when I've got enough idea of what the foundations are for what I want to be doing in the longer term and how I envisage my average day, then I will look at markets and start to work out, can this market and can services or products in this market match what I'm trying to do with my ideal average day? And more importantly than that, are there any signs of actual demand already in the market? 
So for me, the game that I'm trying to play is identifying demand in the market and then executing with the discipline to fulfill it at a profit. I'll say that again because that's a phrase you're going to hear quite a lot and it's, it's, it's important to kind of have in the back of your mind as you watch me go through all of these steps. So that's identifying demand in the market and executing with discipline to fulfill it at a profit. So what I'm talking about there is like, I'm not, I don't want to come up with something new. I don't want to be original. I don't want to be revolutionary. I want to look for something that people clearly want to buy. Maybe they're coming up with a hack to try and figure out how to do it themselves. It's wasting them time, money. It's clunky. It's falling apart. But it's clear that they're actually already willing to pay and contribute time to solving that particular problem. And then I want to work towards solving that problem diligently so I can get to the point where I know I've definitely solved that problem for that type of person and it's valuable to them rather than kind of guessing that I've got a very cool idea in my head and I don't really know the market that well or the people in that market that well and kind of making the mistake of building something that no one wants. So I'm trying to avoid that by being very pragmatic. And that's why research is so, so important because all of the rest of the stuff that you can spend huge amounts of time on might be a total waste of your time. Now, that's not to say that whatever you find in your research is 100% perfect. There is so much data out there in the world. You can't possibly make an incredibly good, accurate decision every time. But kind of minimizing the risk as we go along that journey um, is what I'm after. And that's what this whole process is about. It's kind of risk reduction rather than the perfect ultimate um, idea. But of course, having those two steps in place obviously puts me leagues ahead of a lot of other people who are trying to figure out what kind of business can they start overnight and get rich from their bedroom. The next step, um, once we've done some research, is kind of testing to see if what came of that research was accurate. So um, these people seem to be struggling with their Shopify sales, maybe producing an ebook on how to um, use PPC or use Google ads or Facebook ads to get traffic to that Shopify site and generate sales. Maybe that's an opportunity. Maybe the, the market are really interested in just putting money into ads as opposed to doing influencer shout outs and stuff like that. If I come across research that might say something like that, then I want to quickly make something that lets me test and work out if that's true. So building the minimal viable product or MVP is quite literally what's the smallest, most lean kind of um, quick and efficient thing I can produce that will give me the answer to whether or not I need to go to the next step as opposed to building out a, a quite complex large product and then finding out six months, two months, maybe 30 uh, months, maybe two, six, two to six years later that people don't want it. Uh, and that happens very regularly where people build something that no one wants because they didn't do the research and hadn't run any tests to see if there was uh, any demand in the market for that thing. So then once um, the tests have gone through and it looks like people might be interested in that, and these tests will take various different forms, um, slowly kind of getting more and more towards building out a product. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'd create a very basic marketing funnel. And what I mean by that is I'll, at the MVP stage, I'll probably be reaching out to people one-on-one -on -one to get them engaged. So cold emails, maybe getting some phone numbers, um, reaching out through contacts. But what I want to do next is work out, not just um, do I have something that people are interested in, but can I get them to that in a manageable way that's somewhat scalable, that might lead to the numbers that I'd be happy with. So for, say for example, I need to speak to 100 people before one person will sign up for my thing. I wanna look for X different ways that I might be able to get thousands of people that costs uh, very little in relation to what I might be um, able to afford or you know, when I'm looking at customer acquisition cost versus lifetime customer value, which I'll come to next, or a little bit later on actually, I'll discuss that in another lesson, because um, that's a really useful idea that people should, should be able to fully grasp and just focus on. Um, but anyway, bring it back to the funnel point, I want to know, A, do I have something people are interested in, and B, can I get people to it? And at that point, I've got something where I think it's worth exploring, not when I've got a good MVP, um, but when I've got a marketing funnel that leads people to an MVP that they're interested in engaging in. At that point, I think I've got something worth exploring and then starting to double down on. Um, until that point, I'm, sh I'm not really gonna be very committed to the idea. Um, 
and, and working things out like that are why, so for example, one of my projects, I haven't touched it for a year, but it's still onboarding people um, pretty much every week, every couple of days, and I'm putting no money into marketing, I'm not doing anything about it, I haven't touched it for about a year. But the reason why that's still working is because what I did is, when I was looking at it as an initial idea, is I was looking at, is there a way to get traffic pretty much for free um, that gets the right type of people that do want to sign up for this thing? And does this thing add enough value to them that they'd want to use it? So getting that loop right, so not just the one thing, but that kind of connecting the two is, is what I'm after here. And then once that's in place, I know that I can kind of get people and I've got a rough idea of what people are willing to take uh, the initial action of signing up and using or potentially paying for. At that point, and I've got a few people coming in a kind of decent pace, uh, not necessarily hundreds of thousands of people a day, but maybe like a couple of hundred a month, then I'm gonna look at, okay, I'm getting people to the project, but how can I focus on retaining them? Because obviously the, the goal in this is actually to have an ongoing customer base that I service and are happy to keep using my product. So once I've been able to get people and I've got a rough idea of what they want, I wanna work on actually building that out to being a useful thing that people come back to time and time again, people are happy to recommend. Um, and that will be a focus on how do I keep people coming back to the solution and how do I deliver enough value for the product development that um, people do want to use that and it does genuinely solve the problem and it's easy to figure out for maybe self-servicing, for example. Um, so that's when I'll really kind of switch my attention from the kind of the funnel and the MVP to focusing more on delivering on that product, which will, will actually be a mixture of those anyway, really, because you're trying to kind of look at all of the different things that go into the product and then test them one by one. Is it better if I do this? Is it better if I do that? What does the feedback say about doing this? What do the people want from the feedback? Should I test that feature? So that's kind of where I'll be drilling down on. And then the next stage will be once I'm confident I've got a good enough product, I'm not trying to produce the next Microsoft. So I don't have to have a massive all engrossing piece of kit. Um, I'm just looking to something that's a very simple service or a very simple platform or a very simple product that I can get to the point and say, all right, this is good enough. This is good. It delivers more value than I'm charging for. Um, people like using it. People are happy to recommend it. Um, how do I scale it to a number that I'm happy to live off or pays for certain aspects of my life that I want to kind of cover? That point, I'll be looking at scaling it to that and then taking advantage of any opportunity I can to automate so I can get down to maybe that four hour day or potentially a four hour week. Um, with one of my projects, I got down to a four hour month. And that was because I scaled it up to a number that allowed me to live well enough. And then I focused on automating everything. Um, obviously, if I wanted to grow to the size of a Tesla or something like that, this scaling and automation has um, a big role in that kind of business but it's not to do the same thing, it's more to deliver more and more and more machinery, more and more and more value, more and more and more product across the world. I'm not interested in that personally, so what my goal is gonna be reducing the amount of time I have to personally contribute to the project on a regular basis. So looking at that uh, framework, um, hopefully that gives you the beginning insight into how A, how I think, but B, what this journey is gonna look like and what I'm gonna be trying to do at each stage, but more importantly, why I'm going to be trying to do those things at each stage. And of course, as you um, dive into some blog posts or get to see videos more and more, um, that will become evident as to why I think like this and why I've put so much time into trying to distill things to this. Um, of course, many of these ideas aren't original to me. I don't wanna kind of portray that. Obviously, I didn't come up with MVP. A lot of this has been studying over the years, trying out different things, working with different people, working things out, um, and people suggesting ideas to me. Um, but I would probably say the way I do a lot of this is, is quite unique. Um, and the way I'm trying to put that all together into something that I can share that other people can take advantage of, um, I think that I'm gonna add an extra layer of value in that way as well. Um, I've got to go because uh, Patricia's messaging me about being late for cinema, but um, I think that is a great introduction, a great place to start. Um, so I'm going to leave it there, but that is going to be super important throughout this journey. So I just wanted to share that and not have it mixed up with loads of other stuff. 
um, before we get started. So hopefully you found that somewhat interesting and that's gonna form the uh, base of all the things you start to see. Cheers.